my lovely, lovely imps, it's time for us to discuss election year 2024. Lightning, lightning, crash and thunder. It's the year 2024. Joe Biden has been replaced by a cyborg. Donald Trump has been replaced by a moldy pumpkin. And we are all well and truly screwed. Okay, everybody, welcome to the, the, the far future year of 2024, the year that we have all been <laughs> terrified about coming. Do not come. I'm going to come. There you go. Welcome to the terrifying future. 2024 is uh, already looking like it is going to be a year of absolute political misery, okay? Uh, Biden has uh, completely tanked in the polls. He is doing terribly, largely, seemingly, as a result of his horrifically bad response uh, to the ongoing ethnic cleansing of Palestine by the state of Israel. Um, the, uh, a lot of, uh, of, of Biden democratic, uh, corporate shills have spent their time saying it's going to go away. This issue certainly won't stick around, but as it turns out, um, young people, and as it turns out, left-leaning people generally do actually care quite a bit about the topic of ethnic cleansing and genocide. Um, people have been very, very disappointed in his response. Um, and of course, while that's not the only issue, it is certainly a major changing factor. A lot of people have been very frustrated about the economy under Joe Biden. Um, and uh, that, but that has been nothing new. That has been, that sort of frustration has existed for a while. The new thing is his position since October of 2023. A few months ago, when this uh, conflict flared up yet again between uh, Israel and the state of Israel and Palestine. It's not going away. Um, some people are saying it's going to go away, that people will forget about it, but I genuinely do not think that's the case. Um, even uh, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war has not gone away in the public eye. There is less, um, you know, day-to-day -day coverage of it, but people still care a lot. People are still talking about the issue a lot. People are still debating about it a lot. Uh, and that is significantly less immediately relevant to the uh, to the American populace than Israel Palestine, uh, given how close America's ties are to Israel, how it, uh, America constantly uh, positions itself as uh, as the largest benefactor to Israel, and how Israel constantly uh, promotes itself as America's only ally in the Middle East or strongest ally in the Middle East. Um, this means that the American public is very fixated on this particular conflict, and Joe Biden is not doing well. However, even with all of that said, Donald Trump is not doing so hot himself. Uh, Donald Trump has been in legal hot water uh, basically nonstop for the last six months, obviously longer than that, uh, given that he's been in legal hot water since January 6th. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but especially in the last six months, Donald Trump has been basically essentially sitting on his own balls, so to say. Uh, the legal strugg struggles that, that uh, Donald Trump is currently facing have only gotten worse, and it's progressed to the point that he has been removed, explicitly removed, from the ballot in multiple states in the United States. Um, now, whether or not him being removed from the ballot will actually affect his electoral chances, it shows you where the country is at with regards to their feelings um, about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is uniquely hated. Uh, there has never been, at least in my memory, 
I'm sure in the history of the United States, but there has never been a Republican candidate more reviled and despised than Donald Trump. Not in my lifetime, not even George Bush. There has been nobody um, more hated, which means that even with Joe Biden's terrible, terrible, terrible performance, uh, it's a real question as to whether Donald Trump will actually be able to overcome his legal troubles and the fact that he is hated by so much of the populace. The fact that Donald Trump is still the front runner for the Republicans means that there is a significant portion of Americans who will quite literally go to the polls only to vote against Donald Trump. They, they would otherwise, they might otherwise not even vote. If it was another Republican, they might not show up at the polls. But there are a ton of Americans who hate Donald Trump so much that they will show up to vote for Biden just to make sure that Donald Trump doesn't win. Which puts us in a very strange place. Um, we have two extremely old candidates, both of whom uh, have caught COVID in, during the pandemic. Uh, some of them multiple times. I think Donald Trump got COVID more than once. Um, their health is not a guarantee, despite being presidents. Uh, neither of them are popular. It is a race to the bottom in popularity. And there is a lot on the line, okay? Because Donald Trump, his promises for, for office have been deranged. They've been genuinely deranged. Uh, him and his allies have essentially promised to do everything in their power to completely uh, 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 disassemble what we what we understand as bait american democracy now don't get me wrong i am i am a critic of american style democracy okay there's a lot of problems with american style democracy but what donald trump and his allies are pushing forward is genuinely troubling uh and of course we've already seen how he behaved We've already seen the type of damage that he did, the way that he ran the country, the type of decisions that he made. Uh, everything from pointlessly da damaging the USPS to the degree that 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 it's it's struggling to make sure that mail gets delivered regularly. Um, yeah. 2024 is going to be a very strange year. And it has a small risk of possibly being even weirder, okay? Because it is a very real possibility that, that either Biden or Trump or both of them aren't able to hold out another year in good health. This was the nightmare scenario that I brought up in a previous video some of you may have watched where I took us through a night, you know, potentials for a nightmare scenario. But we are not clear of the nightmare scenario. And in fact, until the deal is done, until the election is done, we really are not clear at all of the nightmare scenario, which would be genuinely terrifying, okay? I don't know who, I don't know who could even be considered as a, as a backup for Biden. There is no one. Everyone's going to say the obvious choice would be Kamala Harris, but the reality is that Kamala Harris has no public presence. Kamala Harris does not have any sort of public uh, promise at all. Nobody really thinks about her that much. And she wasn't very popular to begin with. Kamala Harris uh, trying to run because Joe Biden became sick or you know, or ill or whatever, or couldn't run, would be a disaster. She went on camera like three times. And she's barely, as far as vice presidents go, she's been a very behind the scenes vice president in a lot of ways. Especially because Joe Biden seems to love to get out in front of a camera, okay? Joe Biden loves to get up there and go, oh, yeah, um... You all, you better watch out, Jack, because I've seen the evidence with my own eyes and my, and the evidence has seen my eyes. 
We've looked each other in the eyes, and I know what I saw, Jack. But on the Republican side, no one even stands a chance except Donald Trump. People actually thought, and, and I will boast just a tiny bit, in that I said there was no fucking shot that any of these people were going to oust Donald Trump. I said none of them stood a chance, not Vivek, not, uh, um, not Ron DeSantis. None of these people stood a chance against Donald Trump, and that has been completely true. Nobody has even made a dent in Donald Trump's numbers. He's just, he's, he's, he's their, he's their leader. He's their God emperor. They made their decision when they, when they got on the Trump train, and very few people have gotten off the Trump train, okay? Most of them are still on, most of them are even further on the Trump train. So if Trump was to become ill or not make it to the election, there's no Republican to replace him. There's no Republican who can stand a chance at the moment among Republicans, not even as a matter of Democrats. The Republicans just do not like anybody else. The GOP wants Trump. That's all they want. That's all they care about. They are obsessed with him. There is a total personality cult. So we are in a very, very fucking weird situation for 2024. 2024 is looking like it's going to be an absolute goddamn mess. And what's more is that Republicans are getting more and more extreme, okay? They're getting more and more violent in their rhetoric. Uh... <laughs> in my home state of Maine... Uh, the Secretary of State made the decision, which is within the Secretary of State's power, to remove Trump from the ballot. And as a result, the Secretary of State was massively threatened with violence and ultimately was swatted. Now, thankfully, the Secretary of State was not home when the swatting actually happened, but a swatting actually happened on the Secretary of State's house as a result of that decision. And to my knowledge, it wasn't even fully finalized at the time that that happened. Now, I, find it, I do find it very weird that the police were actually willing to go through with the swatting uh, on, a, on the Secretary of State. Uh, that seems weird to me. But it just goes to show you where even in small states, where uh, you know Maine only has a population around one million, just how intense the rhetoric has gotten. Um, I was I was tuned into some of the uh, local comments uh, on local news sites uh, in my home state, where people were calling for. There was a recent extremely horrifying uh, spree shooting that occurred, and supporters of Donald Trump were calling for another spree shooter because they felt that they needed to teach this country a lesson, teach the state a lesson for taking Trump off the ballot. Derangement. And at the same time, while right-wing rhetoric has gotten more and more insane, their ability to actually organize seems to be genuinely struggling. They are torn apart. They are fighting each other. There is an incredible amount of right-wing infighting at the moment. Uh, the, 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 a huge chunk of 2023 was spent with a civil war in the House of, uh, of Representatives between Republicans that was a massive embarrassment. There, there just seems to be general political disarray at the moment. All around. And of course, all of this is overshadowed by the looming specter of the plague. The, the skull bird masked cloud of death that hangs over the United States even still. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if you knew this, but according to wastewater analysis, we are currently in the second largest surge of COVID-19 infections, infections in the entire pandemic. Most people wouldn't believe it, 
or know it because it's not even close to getting as much coverage as it was. And because, you know, B the Biden administration declared the pandemic is over, even though the World Health Organization doesn't think that, even though most health organizations don't think that. It's crazy. And this is just anecdotal, but I know tons of people who've just caught COVID recently. It's actually shocking how many people I know who've got COVID recently. Yes, COVID deaths have been dropping significantly because more and more people have been vaccinated and boosted and because the virus is weakening over time weakening okay not it's not weak it's been weakening it's still very bad to get covid covid is still devastating to your body's systems okay and keep in mind that we are still losing quite a lot of people right now in fact let me get you an exact number so the latest one last week so the most the most recent deaths that we had was the week of December 16th. The week of December 16th, the CDC recorded 1,203 Americans dead. Okay? So we're losing anywhere. Oh, wow. Look at that. The beginning of December, 1,545. Uh, the end of November, 1,328. So we are losing about 1,000 Americans every single week to COVID still, which is shocking to think about, okay? And that is what I was talking about when I said, sorry about the little lull there uh, to find that info, but I didn't want to say anything that was incorrect. The specter of COVID death still hangs over this country and its economy. And... Um, that many people dying per week, by the way, has very, very long lasting effects on the economy. Okay? Effects that aren't going to go away even in a single presidency. They're not going to go away regardless of who gets elected next. It is, that's a week, Heavy Gretel. That's, that's a week, not a month. That's a week. It's shocking that this is the state of affairs that we exist in. And there's basically no real effort to try and counteract the effects of this. We've just stuck our head in the sand. And by that, I mean not we. I mean Joe Biden and Joe Biden's administration has essentially stuck their heads in the sand and said, yeah, we don't need any sort of stimulus. We don't need any sort of counteracting measures to make up for the fact that, that tons and tons of working people are dying, that tons and tons of working people died, that our economy took irreparable damage over the course of the last four years, uh, three years, almost four years, pushing into our fourth year of, of plague. It is genuinely shocking. So first of all, be careful out there. But we live in a very strange time in American history. And uh, I feel like we're going to have a lot to talk about this year. I don't know how everything's going to play out this year. But I am very concerned. And I am very worried about certain things. On one hand, I'm not going to lie. It doesn't really look like, like Donald Trump has much of a chance against Joe Biden on a pure numbers level right now. But the numbers guys have been wrong before and we don't know what's in store. You know, we don't know what could happen around the next corner. There are There is no prediction that lasts very long in American politics with regard to who's going to be in power, with regard to who's going to be popular. Uh, Joe Biden uh, uh, crunched Donald Trump. But can he do that again? Will he do that again? And what what could happen in the in the in the next, you know, 10 months leading up to the election day? 
And of course, everybody says never forget 2016. Everyone was 100% sure that Hillary was going to deck Donald Trump, and she just didn't. She just didn't. I do believe that a Republican victory would be disastrous for this country. I truly do believe that. Um, Donald Trump, the Donald Trump presidency was a truly deranged time to live through. Uh, it was horrible to be, uh, I think to be anyone, but as a trans person under Donald Trump, the, the extremely weird and pointless, uh, attacks made against trans people on purely conservative ideological grounds was really terrible to live through, okay? It was a terrible time. And let's not, uh, let's not, uh, let's not pretend that's the only thing. There was Donald Trump's handling um, of, uh, of protest movements, which was vicious and nightmarish. We all remember the black bagging. Everybody, everybody talked about that. No, almost no, no one who cares has forgotten about it, but a lot of people in the general public have. And of course, there was the just general disassembly of any of the systems, any of the few systems of fairness that exist in the United States in favor of the interest, mostly, primarily of Donald Trump himself, but generally of American business. Donald Trump's presidency represented a dark bargain between government and private industry, which is something that a lot of people don't talk about when they talk about fascism. You know, fascism represents expediency on behalf of private industry. The government essentially acquiesces. The government doesn't dissolve itself. The government doesn't become abolished. These people aren't small government people. What they do is they abolish the parts of government that impede business, specifically the type of business that is favorable to them. War industries, policing, uh, uh, prisons. Those, those conservative industries that, that are willing to play ball. So there's this, this coming together of, of government and finance to align with one another in the name of a more expedient form of capitalistic expansionism. Private schooling, another perfect example. Boy Meets Mini says, this is exactly what's happening in Modi's India. Yes, it is a, a hallmark of fascism, of, of fascistic thought, is, the, is basically uh, 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 they, they disassemble the parts of government, uh, that they disassemble social services while using an incredible amount of government influence and even government finance. Uh, in, in basically every fascist nation, the government will invest itself in private industry that is loyal. I'd have to look at this polling numbers. All the info about this. Yeah, Colorado and Maine have both decided that he has been disqualified because of his actions on January 6th. But a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of disinformation. That's another thing that we live in that we're going to have to grapple with that I think will make this election a different one, um, even than prior elections, which is that we truly live in a completely new era of misinfo and disinfo. The information derangement is uh, shocking, to say the least. Um, it's, it's genuinely shocking. The, uh, the, that since, since 2016 to now, the ways in which people can be subject to genuinely deranging information has just gotten so much worse. 
Like, I mean, think about how, like, social media alone has grown and grown and grown, and their ability to try and uh, not even counteract, because obviously counteracting all misinformation is an, an impossible task, but to even slow it down at all has completely failed. And there is just a mass reality crisis. Uh, uh, people existing in completely alternate realities. I mean, one such example is talking about um, is talking about the the jab. If you bring up uh, uh, the 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 uh, getting your Fauci ouchie, a there are a bunch of people out there who genuinely their genuine belief is that people are just dropping dead all over the place after getting their shot. Despite the fact there is no evidence to support this whatsoever. They are convinced. And I mean convinced. Hell, it even came up on that hippy-dippy uh, debate. There were people literally sitting there trying to argue the idea that you get a, a shot and that people are just dropping dead from it. All over the place. Made it up. They've just made it up in their minds. Or rather, it's been made up for them and they've internalized it. And now we've got AI disinfo. I think we're in for a very strange year. And I don't know exactly what to expect. I don't know what to expect for discourses. I think there's a lot of people who are, especially in political spaces, who are basically sitting here rehashing old conversations. Um, hell, we even watched a debate, the sort of vote blue no matter who um, conversation. Uh, is it, it feels like it's from a different era. And yet, it might be relevant. I don't know. It could be possible that that's, that's what everybody's going to be thinking about this year. Because there's so many people mad at Biden that that might be a, a central point of conversation. It's really hard to know. But it does feel like, wow, like, we're, we're engaging in, a, in like a, a totally different and, and changed... Uh, playing field for electoral politics and politics more generally. I, I, I do not know what to expect. However, you know, and it is my promise to you, that we will be keeping our eyes trained on American politics throughout this year and that we will discuss it together on this channel as we have in the past as we did in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and now 2024. We'll discuss it together. We'll talk about these, top, these subjects. And hopefully, we will continue to, regardless of the nasty mess uh, on the national level, we will continue to build a better political space for us. One thing that I think Americans have a problem with. And I am calling even myself in the past out on this. And I think it's a cultural issue, is that Americans are hyper alienated, even in comparison to other, other people in similar nations. We fixate on the spectacle of national politics and to the degree that we forget our own lives. And I think it's to a great, uh, it's, to, it's, it's a great folly. It, it, it's an incredible weakness. When Donald Trump got elected, I had done everything I could possibly do at that moment in my life to make sure that Donald Trump didn't get elected. I went and voted with my whole household we voted in a swing state. We had voted in the primary. I had called in to various political shows to give my opinions. I had argued with family members. I had gone and gone to rallies, okay? I did everything that I could at that time in my life to make sure that Donald Trump wouldn't win and he still won, okay? The sad reality is that sometimes, no matter what any one of us does, we can't control something on the national level and our fixation on the importance of the national level can sometimes lead us to neglect our own actual political power. What we have at our fingertips, what we can do 
with our abilities, with our hands, with our voices, with our talents. Okay? And I think that's a big problem, especially among communities like mine, where there's a lot of queer and trans people, where there's a lot of minorities generally. Because we need to be able to weather even when things go, don't go in our favor. We don't have a lot of control. So we have to build ways to weather, survive, control, evade, okay? persist, thrive. And that's something that I've always encouraged in my community. But I am at the end of the day still just an entertainer. What I can do with my abilities, what I can do with my voice and my camera and my beautiful little setup and all of that is that I can encourage all of you to think about what powers you have to build connections with one another that can last, things that can help you stay alive, you know, have you ever seen those images of ants staying afloat on a pool? Let me show you a picture, okay? You ever seen that stuff? Some of these are crazy. Man, look at this one. That's crazy. Look at this shit. Actually hard. To, oh, wait, why is it so small? It was so big before. Hold on, let me get the big one, okay? Look at that. Those are ants on a pond, okay? All those ants have a way. They, they link their legs together and they spread out and they are able to create enough buoyancy between their bodies holding their legs together that they can actually have an entire colony built on top of ants that are holding hands, okay? I'm not even kidding you. The ants, they all spread out and they flatten themselves out and they hold their legs together to create buoyancy between them. An entire, sometimes an entire ant hill can be built on top of those ants holding hands, okay? Those ants can't do anything. In fact, this, it's really funny. This is specifically about how the ants are in the wake of a hurricane. An individual ant can do nothing about a hurricane blowing apart the forest that not even close. No ant can control the arrival of a hurricane. But by holding, by sticking together, by building a connection, by floating together, they can stay alive. Their whole group can stay alive. All of them together. Even when a hurricane strikes. And the reality is that we together, all of us collectively, have already seen hurricanes strike. Okay? Uh, Donald Trump getting into power in the first place was very difficult. And some of us didn't make it. Okay? It's just simply true. Some of the people that belong to our community did not make it through. We can do better next time. Okay, and it's not by it's not by over fixating on national politics. It's not by dumping all of our energy into national politics. It's by looking for just a moment at what is in front of us, at the world that is around us, the potentials that exist within us and between us. It is about building connections where we can cover for one another, where we can watch out for one another, where we can hold up one another, where we can lift each other up, build together. Okay, building actual connections and sometimes that process lacks the fanfare and the spectacle of the national election struggle you don't get to make a uh, a, a flashy advertisement about people uh becoming friends and and rooming up together so that they can weather another economic crisis. There's nothing flashy and exciting about that, but those three people who got together and got a place together and were able to vibe and make a happy home for themselves for a few years lived comfortably for a few more years. And that's beautiful to me. And that's what I want to encourage our community to be able to do, to realize the people who are around you, the world that's around you, to uh, 
coalesce our power, which we do have, we might be powerless to stop the arrival of a hurricane. It might be impossible, but we are not powerless. We might be powerless to that end, but we are not powerless. We can take care of each other. We can watch out for one another. So keep that in mind going into 2024. That's my message for 2024. I don't know how things are going to turn out on the electoral front. There's no way to predict that yet. And to be honest, we live in a different paradigm. But one thing that remains true is that we have eyes, ears, mouths, hands, feet, skills, spaces, and we can find ways to use those. We should not be blinded by the churning machinery of machines that we don't even control, okay? We should recognize our power, learn how to use it, and if we don't know how to use it, find out how to use it. That's what I'm going to try and help us all to do in my small part this year. Imps together strong. Imps together strong for sure. For sure. That's true, Killjoy. As Killjoy brings, uh, brings forward, people need to get used to going to their local town hall meetings. It was roughly 11 people that caused the majority of book bans. Yeah, that's true. Um, there are all kinds of creative ways that we can engage in politics more effectively. Um, a lot of people want you, a lot of people basically, they're only, you know, they're only envisioning of how you engage in politics is donating to candidates uh, or volunteering for candidates on the national or local level. But there's a million ways to get involved in local politics. And also, there's a lot of weird ways to get involved in local politics as well. Uh, for example, making sure that trans people in your life are okay means that there are more trans people in your area who could who can live another day and who are going to participate in politics in their own way. There are a lot of ways. Politics is more complicated than just vote here now, give money here now. That is not that is a bankrupt view of politics. I agree with you 100%. Sometimes just showing up to town or city hall meetings can make a huge difference. I would like to do that. Proving Beetle, I intend to do that at some point. Does keeping myself alive every day count? Absolutely. What, my imps, is rule number one? What is rule number one? What's rule number one? My imps know. That's right. That's right. We've already got some answers. Do not fucking die. That is rule number one. Do not fucking die. Do not die. Don't fed post. That's just a general chat box rule. That's not rule number one of the community. The predominant rule of the community is do not die. I want all of the people in my community to adopt a surviving, thriving mentality. Do not die. Easy peasy. True Bluestone. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little segment talking about the future and trying to remind everyone of where I believe priority should remain, please make sure that you are subscribed down below and leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you have creative ways of building your power in these strange times, Please tell me down below and make sure that you're subscribed. Thank you so much for listening and keep listening for the signal.